Welcome back ladies and gentlemen to the channel. My name is Sky and I have been absolutely loving the Void Gauntlet so far. I gave you all the choice between two different types of builds with the Void Gauntlet and you all selected the Fallen Musketeer. This spec is all about massive damage. You can absolutely shred backline with the Void Gauntlet and dominate the mid range with the musket. In today's video, we're going to be going over the strengths and role of the Fallen Musketeer a wide variety of talent selections, important stat distribution, armor, gems, and some perks you should look out for. Now, without further ado, let's unveil the Wrath of the Void Gauntlet. The number one strength of the Fallen Musketeer is the amount of debuffs it brings and the capability of taking away enemy buffs as well. It brings scary high damage and it brings great survivability in melee range. It is very strong in all forms of PvP combat and excels in the mid range as well as being very strong in 1v1s or 1v2s. Now those are some of the strengths, now let's move on to the talent tree. Okay ladies and gentlemen, so we're in game now. And one thing I want to state real quick is that the Void Gauntlet musket combo is unlike anything I've ever seen before. It may not have... The amazing counterplay that Rapier does, but the raw damage and survivability of this incredible weapon makes up for it. Let's start off with some Void Gauntlet talents. So one thing you gotta know is if you play a melee build with the Void Gauntlet and you also have a musket, you don't have any escapes. You don't have the flesh to get out, you don't have the repost to instant, you know, uh, uh, trap and get the heck out of there. You don't have evade to dodge, you don't have as much mobility because you're not getting as much stamina with evade in the attacks. This weapon is all about all inning your opponent. Either you go down or they go down. Obviously, there are some things you could do to survive better like dodging and blocking. It's very, very true. But a quick sum up of this weapon and what it is and how strong it is. You're going to try to trade with them as much as possible because there is no shot. I don't care what weapon they are. They're going to be able to trade with you while you have all your abilities ready to go. There's no way. Now let's start off with the Void Gauntlet talents and really what you're going to be doing. You're going to grab Void Blade, which you summon a quick Void Blade in every attack, stacking up to three times as a disintegration debuff, dealing weapon damage per second and reducing their damage absorption. Now this is already important. Stacking this up to three times applies a dot on them and it reduces their damage absorption. Not only does it make them weaker, it makes them take a damage over time. Already an incredibly powerful ability. Next up we have Oblivion, which you drop an AoE at your feet, dealing weapon damage per second and empowering you while you're in that zone. Very, very strong as well. Lastly, we have Petrifying Scream, which is a cone frontal little scream, very short range, that roots enemies in place. By the way, it doesn't just root them, it interrupts them, so it gives them a quick little stagger. So that's very important to note, if someone's about to do like uh, an, an animation where they're doing the execute on the Great Axe, you can Petrifying Scream and interrupt it completely. So that's very important to note. Another thing to note about the Void Gauntlet is that critical strikes boost you to the moon. For example, we have 10% critical chance above 50% health. Okay, that's great. We have 10% critical chance while all abilities are on cooldown. Okay, we're already at 20% crit. 10% cooldown reductions on all critical hits. Then you have on critical hit gain health equal to 15% of the damage done. You start to see a severe pattern in the annihilation tree. Critical hits and critical damage is going to be a lot and it's going to be very important to how you play this weapon. Okay. And on top of that, already these things to, you know, increase your damage and empower you and cooldown reduction. Now, they have the audacity to give you things defensively. For example, Fortified Blade, Fortify when you activate your Void Blade. Then we also have Fortify for each person you hit with the Petrifying Scream. So now you already have two forms of fortifying yourself and giving yourself more damage absorption. Percentage damage absorption. This, in, this isn't just an armor increase. This is a flat percentage damage absorption increase. It is incredibly, incredibly powerful 
and you should take advantage of it when you have your abilities ready to go. Lastly, to make you even more beefy is Withering Oblivion. Your attacks inflict weaken to the targets inside of the radius, stacking up to three times. Now, if you stack this three times, that's 15%, then we got 20%, and then you have a bare minimum of 10%. That is a 45% damage decrease minimum if you land all these abilities. That's not considering getting an additional two stacks. That's not considering, you know, your armor value itself or any other things going on. That is just flat damage absorption in the Annihilation Tree. Now, to finish out this tree and to give you more damage, more raw damage, right? We're going to grab 10% critical damage on Void Blade attacks. We're going to grab Forsaken Pack for the 10% damage while below 50% mana. Then finally, we're going to grab the Bread and Butter, Empowering Proximity. You gain in power for every ability that you use within a small meter radius of an enemy. So all of these empowerings are starting to stack up. And not only does it increase your basic attack damage, it increases the damage over time of your Void Blade. It increases the damage over time of your Oblivion. It increases the damage of your Petrifying Screen. Now, to give you some more healing and some more, you know, leech potential, you're going to grab Leeching Blade. You're going to grab Void Caller. You have to know with Leeching Blade, it only heals you off of the thrust attack. What does that mean? The Void Gauntlet has two types of attacks. The basic attack, which is a slash, and then the heavy attack, which is a thrust. The thrust is the only thing that benefits off of Leeching Blade. But if you manage to critically strike off of Leeching Blade, that would be a 15% weapon damage heal if there's three stacks of Void Blade disintegrate on them. You also have that as well as leeching agony, as well as, you know, potentially having leeching on some armor or your weapon, it can get absolutely out of control. Now, to finish up the tree, what we're going to do is just simply finish out the tree in the Annihilation. We're going to grab the stamina while you're inside of Oblivion for even helping your tanks while an outpost rush or wars. And then we're also going to grab Refreshing Frailty for the cooldown production as well. And lastly, we're going to grab Efficient Harvest. So, you know, when you hold that right mouse button, you're going to get less health drained and, you know, the same amount of mana for that as well. So this right here is a solid, solid build and a beautiful, beautiful design talent tree that is absolutely phenomenal. Now that we discussed the Void Gauntlet, let's move on to the musket and how it can complement this weapon so well. Okay, so now talking about the musket, there's no clear-cut musket build that is going to be the best for every situation. That's not how this is going to work. The Void Gauntlet is very complex, and in order to complement it even more, you need to know what situation you're about to put yourself into and be able to spec your musket accordingly. For example, for Outpost Rush, for Wars, for Dueling, you're always going to have a different build when it comes to your musket. Now, if we're talking about specifically Wars, I would recommend picking up Powder Burn, I would pick up Stopping Power, and I would pick up Sticky Bomb. If you're using the Void Gauntlet in Wars, you have to know your role. You're not going to be a complete sniper. You're not going to be someone who is, you know, focusing on siege weapons. That's not what this build is about. This is all about mid-range, complete domination, okay? When you're in wars, your goal is going to be debuff as many people as you can and get increased damage based off of that. So we're going to fill out the powder burn tree. We're going to grab back it up for the movement speed, empowering weakness, tactical reload, and kick them when they're down. Kick them when they're down and empowering weakness are phenomenal when paired together you know, for, for having those debuffs and increasing your damage with it. With eight points left, we're going to try to get that lethal combo talent. So we're going to grab the stamina regeneration exhaustion on the target hit with the stopping power. We're going to grab this movement speed slow as well. We're going to grab hustle for the additional movement speed. And we're going to grab lethal combo for the 20% additional damage to a people that are affected by the trapper tree status effect. Now for these last four points, it can entirely depend up to you. So I'm going to take the empowering headshot for the damage increase. I'm going to take ballistic advantage for, you know, the non-damage fall off while they're farther away. I'm going to grab hit your mark for the increased critical strike damage while they're farther away. And for the last point, you can either grab heightened precision or weaken defense. Now, 
Wicked Defense can be very good because you are going to be in that mid-range, you are going to be in that fight a lot, and the Void Gauntlet does get countered by shields, so grabbing Weakened Defense could be a very, very good idea, so I'm going to go ahead and pick that up. Now, this would be your, your go-to war build if you're using the Void Gauntlet. It's great for, you know, mid-range fights and damage with AoE with Sticky Bomb and the Void Gauntlet, uh, you know, and the Void Gauntlet AoE strikes, as well as stopping power and powder burn for, you know, attacking those healers and getting them far away from the fight and really either chasing them down to finish them off or just completely killing them with your musket on its own. Okay, so now we're going to clear all this out, and now we're going to talk about a Outpost Rush build. So if you want to look for Outpost Rush build, you know, get ready to take some notes and pause the video whenever you can. We're going to take Powder Burn, we're going to take Traps, and we are going to take Sticky Bomb. The reason we are taking Traps over Stopping Power is because in Outpost Rush, having Traps and specking into this ability right here, Scent of Blood, it gives you 100% healing on all of the weapon damage that you deal. So just having that right there is going to make you a lot better at survivability. We're going to grab double traps for the double traps. We're going to grab kick them while they're down, as well as empowering weakness for the debuff increased damager. We're going to grab tactical reload and hustle. And finally, we're going to grab back it up for the movement speed for kiting melee as well. Now for the last four points, I suggest you do the same thing as we did before. Grabbing some extra talent just in case you need to hit someone from a far away distance, you'll be able to do that. We're going to grab Empowering Headshot, we're going to grab Ballistic Advantage, and we're going to grab Hit Your Mark for the additional critical strike damage the further they are away. It almost might be mandatory to take Ballistic Advantage on all specs. It is a musket meta right now. And you gotta know that you can kill musket players, and you gotta know how to do so from a mile away. Lastly, I would take weakened defense, because you are gonna get countered by those sword and shield users, and the armor penetration against them could be very valuable. Now, lastly, if we're going to be talking about dueling, what's gonna be best against casters? What's gonna be best against melee, you know, mid-range fighters? What is gonna be the all-around best thing you can spec into? For almost every situation. Now specifically for dueling, I'm going to recommend taking Powder Burn, filling that out. We're going to take Traps for the amazing control and amazing survivability, and we're going to take Stopping Power. The reason we're taking Stopping Power it is, is because it's phenomenal for knocking back those melee fighters, as well as controlling those mages or archers when they're farther away. We're going to continue to fill out the Trapper Tree, we're going to grab Sense of Blood and Double Traps, we're going to grab Tactical Reload and Hustle. We're going to grab Supplementary Repulsion for the Stopping Power Slow. We're going to grab Salt on the Wounds for the extra Execute Damage. And we're going to grab Lethal Combo for the 20% damage against targets affected by a Trap or Tree status effect. Finally, we're going to grab Empowering Weakness and kick them while they're down for that beautiful, beautiful debuff damage. And to finish off the last two talents, you're going to grab Empowering Headshot and back it up. Now... If you're fighting a sword and shield user, I would take out Empowering Headshot and replace it with Weakened Defense. Weakened Defense is disgusting against sword and shield users, it counters them completely, but if you are not fighting them, I would keep it as Empowering Headshot. Now what's so important when you're dueling with this weapon combo is that you're begging people to go all in and bull rush. You want them to rush you, you want them to get in your face because you're salivating at the thought of taking out that Void Gauntlet and going all in with them. The one thing you have to make sure of while you're using that Void Gauntlet is you don't get hit with the CC Chain. If you get hit with the CC Chain, you're going to have to run for your little life and pray to God you can land a trap to get some healing off with Scent of Blood. The only thing that I've found that counters Void Gauntlet is Crowd Control. Crowd Control absolutely dismantles us we are very squishy if we don't get our attacks off. We die very quickly if we don't leech off of our damage. We will be very, very easy to kill if we are controlled. Okay, so those are some of the talent trees. Now let's move on to armor and stats. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, now we are going to talk about armor and gems. Now, if you are a very high-skilled player and you know how to properly dodge and manage your stamina well, I would recommend light armor. I know it sounds very crazy, why would you go light armor, you would get destroyed in melee, but it's not true. 
The Void Gauntlet's leeching and fortify talents give you the ability to completely trade one for one with the Great Axe player, no problem. The extra damage that you get from Light makes you hit so hard with that Void Gauntlet and hits very, very hard with that musket that you will absolutely crush people. Now, if you're not so skilled in all those things and you would like to play it a little bit more safe, maybe be a little bit more tankier, I would recommend this setup. You would go heavy on the head and chest piece, you would go light on the legs, and you would go medium on the gloves and boots. This right here allows you to have 22.9 on the weight value, which is 0.1 right under the heavy armor value, maximizing the defense you get while staying in the medium armor value. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, now that we're going to be talking about attributes, it's important to know what you want to do with your Void Gauntlet musket. Do you want to deal a little bit more damage with your Void Gauntlet? Do you want to deal a little bit more damage with your musket? Or do you want a mixture of both? Because I created three separate builds for each of those. Now, to start off, if you want some really high Void Gauntlet damage, you're going to want to go 300 Intellect and 100 Constitution. I won't be able to show you on this video, but what it allows you to be is, you know, pretty much a complete shredder with that Void Gauntlet. It makes you a lot more tanky with the 100 Constitution, and the 300 Intelligence makes your damage on the Void Gauntlet through the roof. You'll be able to destroy anyone in melee if they even dare to come up close to you. One thing to note though is that your musket won't deal as close to as much damage, and you will be, you know, rather weak from the mid to long range. Now, if you want a good solid mixture of both, um, what you're going to want to do is 200 intellect, 50 constitution, and 150 dexterity. Now, I do have some points left over, so I'll put them the rest in dexterity because that does equal out to more damage for, um, you know, my musket, which is a little bit lacking in the department if I put this much in intelligence. This will be pretty much your base setup. 150 dex, 200 int, 50 constitution. This right here is very solid for both of them for dealing high, high damage. Um, you have 200 plus intellect for the Void Gauntlet for dealing massive damage up close. You have the decent medium range with the Empowered Musket that would hit very hard if you managed to land those debuff empowering shots. And you're very healthy with the Constitution and extra healing bonus on your potions as well. If you really like staying far away and only going all in with the Void Gauntlet if you have to, then I would recommend this setup. 250 dex, 100 int, 50 constitution. This makes your musket hit much harder than before, and you gain immense benefit from the 10% critical damage on this tier as well. If they're in a route like your trap or your, uh, you know, your scream ability from your void gauntlet. So you could get a lot of bonus damage and value out of that as well. This is really your go-to setup if you want to have more damage with that musket. Always remember that. Now that I've shown you those three builds, Let's move on to some gems and perks. To quickly go over some good musket perks, Enchanted and Crippling Powder Burn are very solid pickups. Enchanted with the flat percentage damage increase and Crippling Powder Burn for that essential slow for landing those targets afterward. Keenly Empowered is great for the 15% damage bonus after a critical strike. And Keenly Jagged pairs very well with Powder Burn for that huge dot damage. Vorpal and Vicious are about the same, with Vorpal having strictly headshot damage increase, and Vicious being strictly critical damage. Okay, now moving on to the big boy, the Void Gauntlet perks. Let me tell you something. This weapon has an insane amount of perks that could pair incredibly well with it. Let's start off with the best row. Putrefying Scream could be one of the most broken perks I have ever seen in this game. Reducing healing by 50% on a target for 10 seconds. That means there is no chance a healer is going to be able to survive your onslaught of attacks. If you manage to land your root and you get your void blade up and running, that is a wrap for them. Voracious blade, while you're below 50% health, successful void blade hits heal self for 30% of the damage done. Now this can pair very, very well with a moonstone. Moonstones allow you to deal extra percentage of damage while you're lower HP. So the lower HP you are, you'll deal more damage and heal for more damage as well. Keen is very strong because the Void Blade is all about critical hits, and the more critical chance that you have, the absolute better. 
Enchanted is great for the flat percentage damage increase, and Life Stealing is incredible because it pairs with so many of your perks and healing as well. Moving on to our second row, Keenly Jagged, Vicious, and Nullifying Oblivion. Keenly Jagged is amazing. When paired with your Void Blades Disintegrate for extra damage over time, Vicious is also great for giving you that nice critical damage due to the high percentage of critical chance that you have, and Nullifying Oblivion is phenomenal for Wars and Outpost Rush group buff elimination. The last two that I'm listing are pretty decent, but you know, obviously I wouldn't try to pick these over any of the other ones. Keenly Empowered and Keenly Fortify are good for increasing your damage after a critical hit, and you know, increasing your survivability after a critical hit as well. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, kicking off gems now. With Musket, you have a pretty decent variety of options that, that really change your gameplay as a whole. Now, for the Void Gauntlet, it's a bit limiting. Since it is a melee weapon, you only have very limited options with it. Most of your builds, as long as you have 150 intellect, you're going to grab that Sapphire. It really could be any type of elemental gem, but the Sapphire in particular is very, very strong because not a lot of PvE monsters are resistant to it. Moving on to our second row, the Onyx and the Emerald. The Onyx is very, very good if you run a high dexterity build and you focus on getting that one-shot potential through that big burst opener. You can very easily two-shot people if you set it up properly. The Emerald is very solid for executing and amazing if you pair it with Salt on the Wounds. And finally, our last tier, the Diamond and the Opal. The Diamond is good if you focus on staying as far away as possible and not taking any damage to get a lot of value out of it. The Opal is really, really valuable if you're in the mid-range, constantly dodging, and especially good if you wear medium armor. Moving along to the Void Gauntlet, it is a phenomenal executor, especially if you have all your Empower buffs active, which will make for a bad day for any melee opponent. Moonstone is incredible when paired with certain perks, and is very, very good for bringing what we all know and love, a good comeback. Jasper is very good as well if you have medium to heavy armor, and you're in the thick of the battle, keeping that damage bonus up as much as possible and slashing through your enemies like butter. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna wrap up this video on the Fallen Musketeer. I've had so much fun playing with this build and I hope you will too. Remember, I stream live on YouTube every week during the week at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard. So please be sure to stop by and check on me. I would absolutely love to chat with you all. My name is Sky from the Comeback Kids and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.